Hello, in this video we will talk about green fluorescence protein and its application in biomedical research. So green fluorescence protein or GFP is a protein that exhibits bright green fluorescence if we expose it to a blue or ultraviolet light. This green fluorescence protein has a beta barrel like structure and it was discovered from the uh, jellyfish Aquaria victoria. And now this is the pillar of biomedical research, especially people who are working with cell biology, molecular biology, etc. In this video, we'll talk about several applications of GFP and green fluorescence protein. Let me tell you, apart from green fluorescence protein, scientists have now generated other colored uh, uh, fluorescence proteins such as citrine, M-cherry, m, -cherry, m and many more. Now let's say we are a biomedical researcher and we want to know that where a particular protein of interest, in this case protein X, is localized inside the cell. So here is our protein X and we want to know where it is localized. We can tag protein X with a GFP and this is possible with the help of recombinant DNA technology. Here we would be cloning the coding region for protein X along with the GFP sequence and then clone it into an expression vector and then transfect the expression vector inside a cell where we want to see its subcellular localization. So when this particular protein would be transcribed, we can see the fluorescence. In this case, we can see all the fluorescence are coming from the nucleus. That means protein X is localized in the nucleus. So this is one type of application. But what's the big deal about it? We can use immunohistochemistry to do the same. We can detect the presence of this protein in the nucleus or cytoplasm using a particular antibody against it. So what's the big deal about it? The big deal would be understood if we try to understand um, the cellular dynamics. Let's say we want to study vesicular trafficking inside the cell and it's a dynamic process happening in real time. So we cannot rely on frozen snapshot, right? In this case, let's say we have a particular vesicle that we want to track. We can label this vesicle with GFP. Let's say we have tagged RAB with GFP. RAB is linked with the vesicle, so the vesicles would be also labeled. Now, wherever these vesicles go, we can see um, the fluorescence there. So overall, we can track the fluorescence to understand the position of this vesicle in real time. And this makes a lot of sense in terms of neurotransmitter containing vesicle trafficking. So inside the neuron, neurotransmitters are generated in the cell body and they are trafficked towards the synapse. And in this process, they have to travel a long distance from the cell body to the synapse. So the long track of microtubule works like a highway where kinesins take these vesicles and move it to the um, synapses. Now, if we label these vesicles by GFP, let's say a particular protein or a cargo is inside this vesicle and we label that cargo. So, these vesicles are now GFP tagged and now we can understand their mo motion and their movement in real time. We can understand the movement time scales, movement kinetics, the movement direction and many other informations. Now, let's try to understand what could be the other applications of this approach. It turns out that GFP reporters can help us to study tissue specific gene expression. How is that possible? Let's say we have an expression vector. Here we have a particular promoter for gene X. And instead of the gene body sequence, we have the GFP sequence. We can transfect it into different cell types. Let's say an epithelial cell, a neuronal cell, and a fibroblast. Now, if we see, let's say, GFP fluorescence from fibroblast and the epithelial cell, and not from the neuron that instantly tells us that this particular promoter is active in epithelial and fibroblast cells, not in neurons. So tissue specific gene expression profiling can be done with GFP based reporters. Also, if we want to label different parts of the cell, we can use it by GFP. So with the GFP sequence, if we tag a membrane tether such as MCD8, it would mark the membrane. If we attach a nuclear localization signal or a mitochondrial localization signal, it would go to the nucleus or the mitochondria. 
and thereby highlighting that particular structure which can be studied in real time. Let's say we want to study the fusion dynamics of mitochondria. So we have labeled the mitochondria by attaching GFP with a mitochondrial localization signal. And now the mitochondrias are highlighted in green. Now we can track the dynamics of mitochondrial fusion in real time. Also, we can track cell migration in real time if we tag a particular cell with GFP. In this example, this cell is moving through this tissue space in real time and we can track it with live microscopy. We can also understand how uh, we can understand how strong is a promoter or the strength of the promoter can be determined. So this is a particular promoter region and this is the gene body. So from the promoter region, there would be transcription, right? So we can take this particular promoter region and instead of the gene body, we can put a GFP sequence that is our fluorescent reporter. Now looking at the GFP fluorescence, we can understand the strength of the promoter. Let me tell you how. We have two promoters, promoter A and B. In case of promoter A, we see this amount of transcription happened. And promoter, in case of promoter B, we see less transcription happen. So by looking at the fluorescence and detecting the fluorescence, we can understand promoter A is way stronger than the promoter B. So whatever we have to compare is the overall fluorescence intensity. Now, let me tell you, that combining the GFP fluorescence with other calcium sensor protein, one can use it as a calcium indicator and track the calcium dynamics inside the cell in real time. And this kind of tool was developed by uh, Junishi Nakai in 2001. Uh, so, in this case, there is a GFP fluorescent protein, which is generally not fluorescent and it's kind of like a scrambled or inactivated form and it is tagged with a calmodulin protein which can potentially bind to calcium and there is a M13 helix from a myosin uh, light chain kinase. Now whenever calcium binds there is a conformational change and the protein is now fluorescently, uh, the, now the protein is fluorescent. So now we can look at these fluorescent levels in real time to understand how calcium fluctuation takes place. For example, whenever the neuron fires, the fluorescent intensity goes up and it comes down when the fluorescent stops firing. So it's, it, it appears as a proxy for neuronal activity. Now, GFP fluorescence can help us to understand signaling dynamics. How is that possible? Let's say in a signaling pathway, the last step or the ultimate step is transcription of a target gene and this is the target gene. We can take the target gene promoter and attach it with a GFP sequence. So it works like a signaling reporter. So whenever the signaling pathway is on, there would be fluorescence and whenever the signaling pathway would be off, there would be no fluorescence. Generally, this particular gene is transcribed and this is the readout of the signaling pathway. And we kind of hacked the signaling readout by using the promoter for this gene and attaching a GFP uh, sequence with it. So whenever the GFP is transcribed and translated, we can see fluorescence and we can quantify the fluorescence to understand the signaling dynamics in real time. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of this kind of approach. So whenever we attach GFP with a protein, it might not interact with a protein normally. So obviously protein-protein interaction could be hindered. Also imagine if protein X is actually an enzyme which converts this substrate to a product. Attaching GFP might hinder its enzymatic activity. So these are few disadvantages of this approach. Now let's talk about the summary. So what are the benefits of fluorescence labeling? We found that labeling and tracking of protein inside the cell can be done real time. Labeling of subcellular components can also be done using this approach, checking strength of a promoter or studying dynamic processes like vesicular transport can be done using GFP tag based approach. Studying cell signaling dynamics is also possible. And if it is combined with several sensors, then it can work like a calcium sensor in and it can report us about neuronal activity. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can support my channel in Patreon or if you're an Indian viewer, you can support me via Bhim UPI app. My courses are present in Unacademy, which is India's biggest online learning platform. If you wish to 
take a subscription you can download the app and you can use my code ap10 to get a 10% discount thank you